like that. Just pull those shadows around a bit like that. And then the light on the bottom lip on one side, and that goes here. To about there, like that. And again, that's blending wet in wet there because we've kept that nice and wet. This light just comes down here basically like that. And you can see how the form is getting closer and closer to the subject. I'll just show you a little bit more blending with these forms here. I'm not going to spend uh, a lot of time trying to be more accurate with the actual portrait of it, but I would like to definitely show you how to keep blending these lights and darks. What's important about an eye, for example, is not doing all the eyelashes and doing the white of the eye and the pupil, nice little black dot and then a nice sparkly highlight. That will look very artificial. What you want to be concentrating on at this moment is just the shapes of light and dark. So we've got a little bit of light that comes down this side like that. And that is far more important to get in first before fiddling about with anything else. And again, when you've done something like that, you can always push back because it's nice and wet. With glasses, glasses refract the light and therefore you get this light coming out over there and then being picked up again on the cheek there. In fact, that line is broken by the refraction. Then just with a little bit of strong dark red, we can just put a little bit on this edge here. And that starts to indicate the right shape and colours and light around the eye. Uh, down here we've already got that. A little bit of blending we can do just on the chin to show you. As I want to find a little bit. Is here. I've got a very harsh light and dark transition there and in the photograph it's not harsh. So even without putting any more paint on here, just because I've managed to rehydrate it using the spray, then I can just soften that transition out like this. And that's something that you can only do with these paints. Like that. Soften this transition here. And this is what I mean by sculpting the light and dark. You sculpt the light and dark like this, going around working with transitions rather than adding fresh paint on. You can just keep adding more and more blending these transitions around until you get them about where you want them to be. Sometimes that means moving them a little bit, uh, but gradually the portrait will drop into place as long as you've started with big proportions first and then slowly worked your way towards the smaller proportions. And this little touch down here, this lip actually I noticed does go up here and I think that's quite nice like that. And here underneath there this little bit of on the cheek on the chin there does that and we can even just add a little bit of redness in there. You can see now it gets more and more refined as we go along. I've spent the time working on this area, not bothered with the shirt or all that, but these are already in proportion. They've got the right light and dark on. So by working on this area, you manage to get the effect that is the most important, the focus of the picture. And that's the features that you want. You want those in proportion. If you've got those in proportion and molded them around, worked by spraying the paint, get the paint moist again, spray it, so that you can work with transitions to get these half tones, pushing them a little bit, a millimeter to the left, a millimeter to the right, gradually getting these proportions of light and dark closer and closer. When you get to that point, you're then free, because in fact, you've probably got yourself a very accurate portrait, which you're then free to build up on if you desire to do so. Well, that's it for this session. I hope you've enjoyed watching. It's all about working with light and dark making sure you get the right forms. Our next programme will all be about colour, and I really look forward to seeing you on that one. <laughs>